Ladies and gentlemen, today marks a historic day in chess. A candidate master has finally used the cock and balls opening in a real game with success. Candidate master's name is Ivan Povshedny, who is a 14 year old chess prodigy from Ukraine. Let's get right into it. Starts off pretty unconventional with pawn to d3. Ivan with the black pieces responds with pawn to e5. Now his opponent tries to play some form of a bong cloud with king to d2. But Ivan says he has no time for troll openings and plays pawn to d5. Crafting the shaft. To pawn to c3, Ivan wastes no time and plays bishop to d6. Now king to c2. Looks a little bit odd once again. Bishop to e6. And now after knight comes to d2, perhaps forming a mini cock and balls of his own, Ivan does not care, he plays pawn to f6, expanding his girth. At this point his opponent is probably suspicious, thinking there's something nefarious going on, so he must strike in the center against the tip. Playing pawn to e4, Ivan strengthens the tip and expands his girth with pawn to c6. After pawn comes to f3, now knight to d7, looks pretty standard, almost creating a full shaft. But here his opponent starts edging, with pawn to h4. A little bit odd to start edging this early on in the game, but it's fine. Now just knight to e7, creating a full cock, all he needs is some balls. After pawn to g3, perhaps trying to bring the bishop to h3 and try to dismantle this shaft, uh, Ivan Castles creating his first ball, uh, which... I must for once credit Lee Chess does actually create a ball. After bishop to h3 with the previous plan that we discussed before, just pawn to f5 blocking in the bishop's attack on the shaft. And after knight comes to e2, perhaps some kind of a delayed cock and balls attack, just rook to c8, creating a full cock and balls. Now I'd like to take a moment to admire this cock and balls. If you look at the position, the girth pawns have been pushed. I'm about to drive this car off a cliff. Subscribe if you want to be my passenger. Survived again, unfortunately. A girth pawn on f5 is some theory that I myself have not even discovered yet, so props to Ivan for doing his studying, doing his research before playing this game. This cock and balls is quite powerful. If you look at the position, the king is in a weird square, and these balls really do look like balls. The thing about this, it looks like a weakness, but this pawn will never take away from the center because it's not principal chess. I know he's playing the bond cloud, but even the most esteemed bond cloud player would not play this. So, to continue on with the attack, king comes back to b1, clearly fearing what's to come next. Pawn to c5, expanding more in the center, which is crucial for attacking the king in future positions. After pawn takes d5, knight takes d5, attack, capturing in the center and maintaining somewhat of a cock and ball structure to this point. Uh, knight c4 now attacking the bishop, so it's best to just bring it back, which is exactly what Ivan does. Now pawn to a4, edging on the other side of the board. As somebody who's covered the edging attack, you always must finish on one side of the edge uh, before you continue edging on the other side. So clearly Ivan's opponent needs to do his homework. Queen comes to f6, defending this bishop now, uh, just in case the position opens up. After bishop comes to g5, attacking the queen, queen just simply drops back to f7. Quite a quite a nice little waiting move, seeing what the opponent is going to do. Uh, rook comes to d8, and now knight to b6, offering a trade of knights. Ivan's opponent edges a little bit more, but this is a mistake, because knight takes now on c4. After pawn takes c4, now we drop back the knight. And if you look at the position, these rooks can come alive by attacking this queen, but the bishop was normally covering d8. So here, Ivan's opponent plays a very strange move, bishop takes e7. Here, queen takes e7, and now the d8 square has come alive for the bishops, or for the rooks, my apology. So after pawn to b3 for I have no idea why, just rook to d8, attacking the queen. Now queen to c2, looks pretty strong, attacking this pawn twice. Uh, this bishop is attacking and this queen is attacking, but there is a very simple defense here, and that's pawn to g6. Pawn to g6, king to b2. Once again, not very much room to improve the position for white, so the best option is to connect the rooks, which is exactly what he does with king to b2. After pawn to b5, forcing on passant. Pawn takes on passant, and now a takes on passant. This rook now has access to the a file. It is better to try and challenge black's rook on the d8 square. If you look at the position, it's practically equal material as well. So rook to d1, attacking the d8 rook. Uh, Ivan does not care, he has better plans in mind, he moves the bishop back to f7. But here his opponent edges a little bit more, which obviously puts Ivan in a very interesting position. He plays queen to f6, uh, however if you look at now, you can't ever push this pawn because the bishop is covering c8. But after pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes d8, and now rook takes back on d8, and this is no longer a problem, so now you can push this pawn. Very interesting. Uh, Ivan's opponent has 1 minute 30 seconds on the clock, whereas Ivan has 2 minutes on the clock at this point. After rook to d8, challenging the rook one more time, eh, Ivan does not care, he puts the king on g7. Rook takes d8, queen takes d8. Now if you look at the position, the material is entirely equal, but we all know we prefer to play as black here. One little tip for beginners. Knights and bishops are good pieces, yes they are equal material points. However, in positions where there is play on both sides of the board, bishops are better. 
However, if all the play was on one side of the board, knights would be better. I don't exactly know why this is the case, but if somebody could explain it in the comments, that would be really appreciated. Anyways, to move on. Bishop comes back to g2, and now queen g5, attacking this square here, but the knight is already defending it. After queen to c1, perhaps offering a trade of queens, just queen back to d8, refusing the trade. Now some pawn moves get played, and queen to c2, but now queen to d7. Now it just looks like some waiting moves get played by both sides, I'm not exactly sure why they get played, but now just knight to h3, trying to jump into the attack. So, uh, Ivan drops back the bishop to cover this g5 square. After the knight comes over to f2, just bishop to f6. So you want to be very careful with what's happening on this queen side. If you look at these pawns, they're the only thing that's blockading these pieces from getting to the king. Not very good normally. So Ivan takes advantage of that after knight to d1, b5. And after pawn takes b5, queen takes b5, just knight to e3, and pawn to c4. But here there's a trick for white, and that's bishop back to f1. Because if you take this pawn now, just bishop takes, pawn takes, king takes, and it's still equal material. Nothing has advanced in the position. Queen gets out of harm's way and attacks this knight on e3. After the knight moves, here just queen to g1, attacking the g3 pawn and the bishop simultaneously. Queen comes to g2, offering a trade of queens. Ivan does not refuse. He takes it this time, putting the king into check and forcing the bishop to take. Now bishop takes, pawn takes, and now bishop to e7, covering some crucial squares, blocking in these pawns in the future. After king comes to b3, just bishop c5, blocking in the pawns as we mentioned. King to a4 now, looking to attack this bishop from the side, or from the edge. But now just king to f7, and king to b5. After bishop to f2, attacking the pawn and getting the bishop out of harm's way, just pawn to c5, looking like they're trying to, uh, to queen over here on c8. Though they are within the square of the pawn, there is actually a king here. I did cover the square of the king in a previous short from many months ago, if you want to check that out. So now just king to e8, trying to get to c8, but the king blocks in. Bishop takes g3, trying to take here and then cover this square so the pawn can't queen. Now just king to b7, very principled move. The pawn can now queen and the king can never get access to these squares because the king is covering these ones. So after bishop takes, now it's okay. After pawn comes forward, just king to d8. Now there is no check now because the bishop can just take. So after the bishop drops back to f1, bishop blocks the pawn with bishop to c7. And after king comes to a6, abandoning the plan completely, just pawn g5. After king b5, maybe get to these pawns before, before black can promote them to a queen, just g4. King c4, bishop to b6. Covering more squares. So now the king can't access these two squares, but it can access this way, trying to infiltrate from the back rank. King to d5 now, and just pawn to e3. King e5, g3. This is called the mini cock and balls. We can see there's two balls right here and a tip. So the bishop, because it's an opposite color to these two pawns, it can't actually stop both of them at the same time. If you try, it's futile, and I'll show you why. After king takes f5, just g2. If you try to stop the pawn this way, this pawn will advance and you can't stop it from queening. And in fact, in this position, White resigned, losing to a candidate master in the cock and balls opening. As you can see, the new generation of prodigies are using this opening to the fullest. And I'm very proud of Ivan for trying it out on an actual game. Though he was getting trolled, he did respond with a very serious attack. And I'm quite proud to see that. And though the cock itself was very girthy, very long... The attack that came from it was what mattered most. Very beautifully played. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.